fellow gamers, it's Nightwing here, the Wii Live Game Reviewer, bringing you Robotech Battlecry for the GameCube, PS2, and the Microsoft Xbox. Story of this game. Alright, Robotech Battlecry takes place during the first Robotech War, and I'll explain that for you who don't know what Robotech or Macross is. An alien race known as the Zentradi have followed Zor's battleship, the SDF-1, Super Dimensional Fortress 1, to Earth, and basically what they're trying to do is capture the ship again because it's their technology. The SDF-1 wages a two-year war on the Zentradi race, which is like a 50-foot alien race, and eventually the Zentradi destroy the Earth. So it's up to you and the rest of the RDF, Max Sterling, Rick Hunter, and the rest to defend the SDF-1 and defeat the Zentradi. So that's the overall story of Robotech. Alright, concept for this game. Players take on the role of Jack Archer, who is a friend of Roy Foker during the Global War. Foker has asked Jack to join the RDF, and he becomes an integral part of the RDF Veritech Squadron. Now, the overall concept of this game is for you to be Jack and to defend the Earth against the Zentradi to stop them from destroying the Earth. But that's actually kind of fruitless because they destroy it anyway. Then your overall concept is to go through these five different chapters and to help protect different towns. You collect different medals in the game to prove your superiority as the best pilot or ace. Controls for this game. Alright, for the purpose of this review, I'll be explaining the GameCube controls. There are three modes, Guardian, Fighter, and Battleoid. We're going to start in Guardian mode. In order to use your missiles, just hit the X button, your Vulcan gun is Y, and to switch into Battleoid, you're going to use your Command Cross, which is the directional pad on the bottom of your GameCube controller. And this will switch you into the three different modes. The next mode I will talk about is Battleoid and Fighter. Battleoid is done with the left Command Cross, and to turn back into your fighter, all you do is you hit the right. In order to steer your ship into tight turns, use the L and R buttons when in fighter mode only. You can strife and stuff when you're in battleoid mode, but it doesn't really work that well. The X button will act as your heavy concussion missiles for your Veritech fighter in fighter mode. And of course the battleoid has the Vulcan gun and can shoot faster Vulcan gun bursts with the X button. Switching between modes is not a headache. The next mode is, of course, Guardian. Guardian's uses are the missiles, the Vulcan gun, and also p picking up objects using the Z button, such as people, medicine, ammunition, you name it. And then you just bring them to, like, a green mission box. You put them down, just hit the Z button. The Z button also works as sniper mode in battleoid mode. Just hit the Z button and then zoom in with L and R and hit the Y or X button to shoot. Your fighter is the fastest mode, and in order to get quick bursts and speed, just hold in the A button. And the Z button will act as your flares. B also targets different enemies, as does the C control stick. Alright, design for this game. Robotech Battlecry stays true to the Robotech cartoon series. In fact, it even uses a cel-shaded graphic, which really plays to this game's strength. The missile streaks, even the fighter detail and the actual explosions are very identical to what you see in the Robotech cartoon show. It is phenomenal and just amazing to, to see all that. The level design themselves is very well drawn, very well animated, and it really makes you feel like you're in the Robotech universe. There are also fully destructible environments, which is very cool. So if I want to go and destroy a building, I literally can. It's just really really cool. Another great thing is the characters look great as do the Veritex and the Zentradi. Alright, history for this game. Okay, most of you know that Battlecry is based after the Robotech cartoon series, but it is not the game that fans wanted. The game fans wanted was based after Robotech 2 The Sentinels. The game was called Robotech Crystal Dreams and was being developed by Game Tech for the Ultra 64 in 1995. The game's plot was based after The Sentinels which would have expanded the Sentinels universe due to the cartoon show being cancelled after three episodes which became a movie. All your favorite characters from Rick Hunter, Lisa, Britai, and of course Max Sterling, and the SDF3 was in this game. But what made this game revolutionary, and sad to be that it never came to be, is the fact that you could go anywhere and you could do anything. If you wanted to fly to Saturn, you could. 
Would you get yelled at by Lisa Hunter? Probably. But the fact that this game was so open-ended and you could go and do whatever you wanted and the story, whatever you did, had a repercussion. If you did something bad, then something different happened to the story. You could follow what the story was, but you could change it too. Like, you could even kill Minmay. I mean, how cool is that? Another great thing about this game is the fact that the go anywhere, do anything, if I wanted to fly to Saturn or the moon, it would take me months to get there, but I could do it. And along the way, I would bump into Zentradi, it could bump into pirates, it could bump into all kinds of different things, and again, the story would change based on what I did. And that would have changed video games forever. Unfortunately, the game was in development since 1995 and was canceled after 2000. The Battlecry staff, Vicious Cycle, actually looked at the Crystal Dreams game and they saw so much potential, but by that time the game was so outdated that they weren't able to salvage anything from the game, hence why it wasn't a sandbox. But Crystal Dreams will be alive and well in the memories of many fans who wanted this game. Another cool thing is you could customize your own Veritex, you had awesome multiplayer stuff, but again, this game never came to be. It's a sad thing. Bad aspect about this game. Alright, what do I have wrong with this game? For starters, when you're in Guardian mode, you cannot turn around, and you cannot break. You have to switch to Battleoid in order to fight, and when you're in the heat of battle, sometimes you forget and you run into a wall. Another thing I hated about this game, you know the Vulcan lasers on top of your freaking head as a Battleoid? You can't use them. No, your Z button is actually, instead of the laser, is your sniper rifle, which was never, ever used in the Robotech saga. Ever! And it's the cheapest weapon! You can use it to kill bosses, and it actually screws up the cutscenes when you use it, because you're not supposed to kill the bosses that fast. Oh boy. Another level that is just probably the worst level in this game is called Cat Scan. And what you do is you follow the cat's eye, and whether you're in Guardian, or Fighter, or Battleoid, you always lose. I have emailed fans, I have talked to many different Battlecry fans. This is the most hated mission. It is the hardest mission in the game. Even on easy difficulty you die. But you can't play the game on easy, you have to play it on hard just so you have decent dogfights. Even when you use the Robotech armor on your freaking Veritech, you still lose. It is so annoying. It doesn't matter what mode you use, you're always going to lose. The stupid cat's eye always gets blown up. I've never beat this mission, and I know a lot of you have, so cut me some slack. Another thing that I hated about this game is there is no Max Sterling. The RDF flying ace, Rick Hunter's best friend, the best RDF pilot, isn't in this game. Yet, his voice actor, Cam Clark, is! And his paint job for the Veritech. That's just stupid. All right, good aspect. Okay, Battlecry may not be in Robotech Crystal Dreams class. Nonetheless, it was a released Robotech game. It's great musical arrangements of the original show, solid voice acting, which is not good in many other games, and there are tons of unlockable Veritex, from Rick to Skull One to even Max Sterling and that just is a high praise for this game. The multiplayer in this game is very solid. It's only two player, but it can be pretty challenging if you're fighting a good opponent. I also liked playing through Chapter 1 a lot, and I replay Chapter 1 a lot. The fact that the SDF-1 is even in this game, and you can fight alongside it, and the other RDF fighters is just amazing. And the fact that Rick Hunter is in this game just adds a fact of nostalgia. Even though you can't play as him, fighting alongside him is one of the greatest things about this game. This game gets a 7 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. Legend of Zelda is next. God bless and peace out, people.